Hi, I'm James. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to configure a few methods of authentication using the mobile SDK. This includes client credentials flow, password flow, and also later part of this video, I'll demonstrate social login as well. First, I'll go over the client credentials flow. The client credentials flow is anonymous authentication which does not require username and password to authenticate. This flow only requires minimal implementation by the developers as it is the default flow set by mobile SDK. And just simply invoke the endpoint. Mobile SDK will validate the device registration and token authentication by itself. Just like standard OAuth 2 protocol, Mobile SDK uses the registered client on the backend service to register the device and authenticate the app against the client. With the device registration record, Mobile SDK establishes mutual SSL connection, which provides secure layer of the communication with the backend services. Before I use the client credentials flow, one of the things that I have to make sure is the proper set of scope is properly registered on the client on the backend service and exported in the JSON configuration file. I'll have to make sure MSSO client register scope is properly exported in MSSO config file. I'll start with the application that we've created from previous tutorial using CA template. In this sample application, I have added few more buttons to demonstrate authentication functionalities. The first one is simply invoking the protected endpoint on the backend service, and another one is to deregister the device and authentication record from the backend service as well as from the local device as we would like to go over multiple authentication methods. We also have a button for explicit login functionality and we also have a label that simply shows the authentication status. I'll start with setting the mobile SDK's flow to the client credentials. As I mentioned, mobile SDK's default flow is already set to the client credentials. You do not need to do anything to use the client credentials flow. However, just to be clear on which flow you are in for this application, set the flow to the client credentials before initializing the SDK. As part of the initialization process of mobile SDK, master start method will initialize all necessary services such as loading configuration file, starting network service, and location services. Now, it's all set for client credentials. Let's start the application. Now, mobile SDK is successfully initialized. All you have to do is simply invoke the endpoint. By invoking the endpoint, mobile SDK should be able to register the device and authenticate it against the client, and should still be able to retrieve the result of the endpoint with a secure connection. That's how simple it is to use the client credentials flow. Another flow that mobile SDK provides is the password flow. Password flow is simply the flow that requires username and password from the end user in order to register the device and authenticate the user. Just like the client credentials flow, the password flows also provides the secure connection with mutual SSL and OAuth 2 protocol. There are two ways of authenticating the users with username and password. One is an explicit authentication and another one is non-explicit authentication. I'll start with the explicit authentication. Explicit authentication is basically developers tell the mobile SDK to authenticate the user with given username and password. Depending on the flow of your app, you may want to explicitly authenticate the user at some point. In this case, you can simply call mass user login with username password. This explicit authentication method will process the device registration and user authentication as it requires. Another thing to mention is that this explicit authentication does not only depend on the password flow. 
While setting the flow to the client credentials, you can still authenticate against the user with the username and password to have a valid token credentials associated with specific user. Once the token expires, Mobile SDK is smart enough to automatically fall back to the client credentials flow. As you can see here in the code, what I did was simply implement UI allowed you to retrieve the username and password from the end user and use those credentials to explicitly authenticate the user. In the application, when I click on the explicit login button, I enter the username and password to authenticate against the user. Upon successful authentication, I should now be able to access the endpoint with the given user credentials. Non-explicit authentication happens when Mobile SDK does the local validation of all current credentials and recognizes that the user credential is required. Mobile SDK will ask for developers to provide user credentials in order to proceed the request. Let's say that I have an application and was not previously authenticated and try to invoke the endpoint. As Mobile SDK does not have any valid credentials, it will ask for the user credentials to authenticate to proceed any request that was received. In this scenario, there are two ways of handling non-explicit authentications. One is using Mass UI framework, and another one is using Mass User Login Block. Mass UI Framework is a framework that takes care of user interface related logic along with mobile SDK. Mass UI Framework will take care of all basic credentials authentication, proximity login, which includes PLA, QR code, and social login authentication as well. By simply dropping Mass UI .framework file and Mass UI resources .bundle file into your project, SDK will automatically detect the presence of Mass UI framework and handle the user interface portion of authentication by itself. You can also simply turn off the Mass UI while Mass UI is still in the project. As you can see here in the project, I have to make sure that Mass UI framework and Mass UI resources .bundle files are added to the project and properly imported in the file that I wanted to use. And as we previously set the flow to the client credentials flow, now we want to switch it to password flow. And as we added Mass UI framework, now we are able to turn on and off for handling UI authentication through Mass UI. Now, let's start the application. Once mobile SDK is successfully initialized, I can simply invoke the endpoint which will trigger the default login dialog through Mass UI. As you can see, this login dialog contains the basic credentials authentication as well as social login and QR code. So I'll enter the username and password for the backend service to authenticate against the user. Once I'm successfully authenticated, I was able to retrieve the result of the endpoint with secure connection. This is how simple it is to make secure connection using password flow with Mass UI framework for user authentication. For social login, just like I did for basic password credentials flow, I'll have to make sure that the flow is set to the password flow and simply invoke the endpoint, which will trigger Mass UI login dialog with social login functionalities out of the box. Then select any of social media of your choice and enter the credentials for social media. Mobile SDK will then use the social media credentials to authenticate the user. As you can see, the social media authentication is successfully done and the result of the endpoint is successfully retrieved. That's a very simple way of enabling social login in your app out of the box. For the password flow, if Mass UI is not included in the project or is configured to not handle UI authentication through Mass UI, Mobile SDK will invoke callback block called Mass User Login Block. Just like Mass UI login dialog, 
This block will be invoked whenever a mobile SDK recognizes the user credential is required. What you should do is to simply implement this callback block before the mobile SDK initialization and any request. As this callback block can be invoked at any time when the credential is required, it is ideal to implement the block independently from other flow. This is one of the ways to implement custom login dialog with mobile SDK. So I'll start implementing custom login dialog. First, we want to configure to not handle UI authentication through mass UI. And then we want to implement mass user login block. And here in the code, what I did was to implement UI alert view controller to retrieve the username and password from the end user and simply invoke the basic credential block with the username and the password which was given from the user login block. Now let's start the application. Just like I did with the default login dialog, I'll, what I have to do is simply invoke the endpoint and enter username and password. As you can see, the user authentication was successfully done and the result of the endpoint was successfully retrieved. Before I end this tutorial, I'd like to give you one use case of using client credentials and password flow with mobile SDK. Let's say that I have to build a flight booking application. Just like other booking application, when you first start the application, you can browse all available flights and schedules without logging into the site. And once you select the schedule and try to book the flight, that's when you are required to log in. For using our mobile SDK, I can use the client credentials flow, which is anonymous authentication for the page that users are browsing for the flight schedules. And once the user selects and try to book the flight, I can check the user st authentication status and prompt the login dialog if the session was not authenticated against the user. By doing so, the mobile application that I built is fully secure even for browsing the flights which does not require user authentication as well as controlling the user authentication in a specific action. By this tutorial, you should feel confident to start working on using mobile SDK for authentication with easy of use and without complicated logic while mobile SDK is securely connected to the backend service. Thanks for watching and see you in next tutorial.